so much onus is usually put on the man in the relationship. But I hear a lot of women that are very frustrated because they're single. Why are there so many single women today? Well, here's it, the onus is on the man. Okay. If a relationship doesn't work, it's the guy's fault. And I know I get a lot of flack for that because guys are, what do you mean? It's just, she was this and she was that. But as a man, you, you have to put your happiness first. And the reason why you have to put your happiness first, because as a credible man, your manhood is attached to your ability to provide and to satisfy your 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 woman, your counterpart, and your children, because you can't feel like a credible man if your kids are hungry and your wife's unhappy. Mm -hmm. um, so that needs. So you need to put your happiness first, because your happiness includes the happiness of your family. So, I, and I think that's a really important concept. But what happens is, if you have so a lot of times you have single parented. Um, single parented homes and you have women that don't and, and they're they're forced to to fend for themselves and so they become these strong women who learn how to survive on their own without the help of a man which is absolutely so the difference is you can't tell a woman and, and we've seen this a hundred times he's a nice guy give him a chance what you're asking is a strong woman to be weaker so that she can accommodate a beta male. That's never gonna happen. It's only, that's like sharks dating penguins. Mm -hmm. It's only a matter of time till she kiss him on the cheek, taste penguin and bite his head off. Because she's never gonna, she doesn't respect him because he's not a shark. Sharks date male sharks. Female sharks date males, they don't date penguins. And so you find so often you find women um, dating their food. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, because they don't have any options, they end up just biting his head off. Or they, they subjugate him to a point where he's miserable and he's just happy to be there. And then she doesn't find him attractive because where's this, where's this exchange between two strong individuals, male and female energy? You, you have, again, you have, you have sharks dating their food. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't fix a relationship by fixing the woman. You gotta fix, you gotta, the man has to be strong enough to handle the woman. Now, when I say, when you hear this, look, I'm a strong woman, I don't mean being a bitch. Right. I don't mean to be selfish. I don't mean being unappreciative. What I'm saying is a woman who has an idea of what respect and integrity, credibility and authenticity is too. And the empathy of her. But even if she doesn't have those things, if a man doesn't, we teach, we teach people how to treat us. And if we tolerate it, that's going to it's going to continue. So you see, a lot of times you get you you have abusive female females will be women will be in, in abusive relationships, right? And and they go, well, if he if you do that again, if you hit me again, I'm a it's already done. He's already hit you. You've already let him get away with that. So if you stay, what you're saying ultimately is that this behavior is okay. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how much you yell and scream and argue about it. If you're still present to have it done again, you are agreeing that this behavior is okay. Relationships are the easiest thing in the world. You just have to figure out what your non-negotiables are and then never negotiate them. But you gotta be honest about what those non-negotiables are. If, it's, if, if a man being abusive is negotiable, then he will be abusive because you're allowing it. If the day that he's abusive, even when he's abusive verbally or emotionally, you go, you don't even say, I mean, I, I don't even say to have the conversation. You got to make ultimate decisions. Don't give ultimatums. Mm. So if somebody's being abusive, you leave. I don't even have the conversation about that. If somebody, if I'm dating a woman and she's disrespectful, it, our relationship is over. Now, if she wants to come back and say, well, what happened? You, you stopped calling me. I go, well, because you're disrespectful and you're unappreciative and you're selfish. That's why. So do you give warnings or do you just, hey, this violated my principles? And I'm, I, out. I'm out. No warning. No warning. Because why? Because. I don't believe that people don't understand 
Okay. When they're being disrespectful, because nobody wants that behavior for themselves. Okay. They the the so this is again goes back to those three principles: authenticity, credit, empathy. So if I have empathy, I don't treat people the way I don't want to be treated. Mm -hmm. So if I am treating somebody the way I don't want to be treated, then I'm already aware of that. Mm -hmm. If I'm being disrespectful, if I'm pushing you aside, if I don't care about your happiness, I know that I'm doing that because I know how I want to be treated. So if I remove myself, now my, my intention is to remove myself because you've shown me who you are. Now that doesn't mean I can't change my mind, mm -hmm. but I don't change my mind until you make me change my mind. I have made my decision about who you are as a person, and I don't like it, and it's not good enough. That goes beyond my non-negotiables, so I'm gone. Now, if she calls me up and says, hey, uh, like, I'm, uh, what happened? And you go, well, you, you know, this is, I, I don't like how you talk to me. And we're in a restaurant, you're being disrespectful, you're unappreciative, you didn't say thank you. It's just, you, it's almost as if, you, as if you think you're entitled to this. My time, my energy, my money, my space, my concern, my, my, my safety. If, if I say, if she says, hey, I didn't realize that such and such and such, I'll never do that. Then now we are, we're, it's Nuremberg. We, now we have a negotiation. Right. So this is you coming back saying, I, I, I think you're worth my time. And I apologize for that, which I think two things we'll always have to do as human beings is forgive and ask for forgiveness because we're all flawed. So I, if a woman says, I, or, or a man says, look, I apologize, and I, I want to understand what those boundaries are so we can, we can grow together. Now you're on, a, on, an, equal, on an equal playing field, right. and if there is a violation again of the same thing, you lied. You are right. inauthentic. So there's nothing to discuss. We talked about this already. So you let them learn on a job. You don't give them the rules. Who, who so learns? Learn Listen, we know how to interact. We know how we want to be treated. Everybody knows how they want to be treated. And if you're not treating people that way, there's something wrong with you. So when you look at this Donald Trump and where he's pulling kids and putting them in cages, you know, you don't want your kids put, you don't want Don Jr. in a cage. He couldn't handle it anyway. Right. But you have no problem putting little children in cages and ripping them from their parents because you have an agenda. That tells me who you are as a person. What if they haven't been taught though? Because some people have just been in a string of shitty relationships and legitimately don't know any better. Sure they know better. So. What they're doing is they're, they're allowing themselves mm -hmm. to be up to, to that their that behavior is okay, okay because they've had they've experienced that behavior and it's reinforced by their friends and it's time. reinforced by the fact that you allow it mm -hmm. to happen it all is I, I had another dude tell me oh my wife she's you know she's latino she's spicy like <laughs> i don't care who i don't care if you you are hot because you grew up in a volcano yeah. your disrespect yeah. is unacceptable I don't care whether you dance to salsa or bachata. Your disrespect is unacceptable. Just like my abuse and my emotional abuse or my physical abuse or my lack of concern for my woman is unacceptable. So this is about righteousness. Mm -hmm. This is not about man, woman, and I this and that. This is just about being righteous. And if you're righteous, when you walk away from somebody who is disrespectful and disingenuous, they never forget you. No, they no. they and, and once they realize and they and they're out there with these the, all these whack dudes who are beating on them and being disrespectful and lying and sliding, they always gonna come back. Yes. Even if you, it, they'll even be part of a, a a multiple harem when when they see guys who are have no credibility. And I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying that's what it is. But some just don't know any better. I swear, they haven't been taught from childhood to relate. Because if you get certain women that have been in a string of relationships with whack guys, they really don't learn right. too much about relationships but besides how to deal with but you can, a whack guy. But you can teach. But if somebody comes back to you and say, I, man, I care about you and I, you're different because you are different. I'm willing to learn. 
then that's then that's your decision to decide if you want to put the time and the energy in on somebody who is, or or if they can't be changed, natural selection. Darwinism works again. You don't get a man. Mm. And if you're a clown and you soft, you don't get a woman. That's why you have the incels, because this is a lack of integrity, a lack of credibility, and a lack of empathy. And so it all works out. So following, the, what I'm trying to start is this movement, mm -hmm. because if we start this movement, all those, all the shady nonsense is going, has to stop. Because we're, we're forced to be righteous, both female and male, we need to be righteous. And we're righteous, everything works itself out. Mm -hmm. If you're hungry, you want somebody to feed you, if you don't have. If you know somebody's hurting, you don't want them to be hurt because you have that empathy. But having somebody who's hungry and then having somebody disrespect you or lack of, of truthfulness and authenticity and credibility, then I don't care. I don't care what happens to you because you don't care what happens to people. Mm. And, and can you imagine that? If that was the case, can you imagine the, the Atlantic slave trade, the Emancipation of Proclamation? If white folks had looked at and said, I don't wanna be treated like this, so I won't treat people like that. There would be no no history of this country enslaving enslaving black people. It just it just can't happen under those under those constraints under those parameters. No, we were talking about women being single. So say you have a single woman, single parent. How difficult is it for her to find a partner or a mate, and how difficult is it for someone who wants to be her partner or mate? And what steps would they have to take to make sure that union happens? Well, I think, again, we talk about authenticity, credibility, and, and empathy. If I'm a woman and I'm a, I'm a single mother or a single mother and I want somebody, then I need to, I need to have value. Mm -hmm. If all I got is a big booty and I don't have no intellect and I'm not, I'm not concerned about you and your welfare, then I'm not going to have nobody. Mm -hmm. and, and you might, you, you, you know, when you're young and you're hot and, and the, 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 the breasts are popping and the, and the booty's tight, that's great. But when you get to be 35, 40 and you, everything starts sagging, you better have another game. We, look, we, I, remember, I remember when Barkley we used to dunk on people and then when he got older, you know, he might, he might, he might D up on somebody and then pull on their shorts. You got to have another game. Yeah. So if you're not being... If you're not if you're not being a good person, if you you got this man and you love this man and you you're not trying to you you're not tapping into what his needs are and what his desires are, um, if you tap into his desires, he will be there. Now, if he doesn't if he doesn't have the the good sense to to have um, to to recognize that what your value is, you leave. Mm -hmm. And then he has to deal with all them trifling, scally, scally hoes that he was dealing with in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then I have a theory, it's called the jelly bean theory, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this is, this is a great theory for women. So anytime you meet a guy, uh, a decent guy, he usually has a couple of chicks on the roster. If he's single, he's dating a couple of chicks here and there, right? Mm -hmm. And let's, this is how it works. Picture each girl is represented by a, a, a large jar of jelly beans, right? Mm -hmm. Every time you do something good, jelly beans go in the jar. Every time you do something bad, jelly beans come out the jar. Now, this is unbeknownst to the woman. This is how men perceive women, okay? Now, here's the difference. If you cook for me, um, I come in, I go, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a little sore. You rub my back. You, anything you do, you get, say for instance, you cook for me. That's three jelly beans, right? Mm -hmm. But if you nag me, that's negative 20 jelly beans. <laughs> do you understand? <laughs> so, negative 17. It, it, right, it's, yeah. so now you, a guy will have a couple of women that he's dealing with and, and the, each jelly bean jar will be on the dresser, right? And one he might have had this jelly bean jar for two years, and this one he might have had for five years, and this one he might have had for one year. Now the one for two years might only have 40 jelly beans in it, and the one with five years might have 70 jelly beans in it because she's constantly putting them in and taking them out and putting them in. You want to be the girl that comes in and goes, this is my jelly bean jar. I'm going to do everything to make that jelly, fill that jelly bean jar up. I'm going to overflow it. When I, 
when I've finished, there's jelly beans on the dresser, it's on the floor, there's jelly beans all over the place. Now, when I have decided that I have shown the best version of myself, I go to the guy, hey, you know, I really care about you. And I know that you're dating other people, and I totally understand that you may or may not be monogamous, but I'm gonna leave because I care about you too much to stay with you mm -hmm. and share you. He's going, if he's, if he's got game, he'll go, all right, I understand, I see what you gotta do, right? Now, what he's gonna do is he's gonna be cool about it, and then he's gonna hit you up later, text you, or, or like your pictures on Instagram, or whatever, or hit you in the DM, and then he's gonna say, hey, and then, uh, as a woman, you don't respond. Then when he finally makes a comment, hey, I was just thinking about you, just checking up on you to see if you okay. Mm -hmm. And she's supposed to go, you know, I really appreciate you checking up on me, but I understand who you are and we don't want the same things. So please refrain from calling me. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, when he goes home, he's looking at a jelly bean jar that's been sitting on his dresser for for five years. It's got 17 jelly beans in it. And he's got one that's been in there for three years. It's got four jelly beans in it. And then when you leave, when she leaves, she goes, I'm going to go. And he goes, yeah, I understand. You know, I, I'm doing my thing the way I want to do it. She takes up, she brings out a, a, a hand truck and she takes her jelly bean jar and she puts it on the hand truck and she pulls her shirt out and she scrapes all the jelly beans off the dresser and she gets a dustpan and she, scree she scrapes up, she sweeps up all the jelly beans underneath the dresser on the floor and then she walks with it. Mm -hmm. And now he got to watch you, the man has to watch you walk away with 6,000 jelly beans. And he's looking at the two jelly bean jars that he has. One's got been there for five years. It's got 17 jelly beans, and one's got 40 jelly beans. And and you, she just walked away with the whole kit and caboodle. If she's honest about what her non-negotiables, if she wants this man, eventually he will he will make a decision about what's better for him. Do I need to be with this trifling chick who just who's disrespectful, don't appreciate nothing, and this, or do I want to be with the woman who really gave a damn about me, gave about my happiness and my welfare, is it really worth it? Is my ego worth having multiple women or is my ego, or what's best for me is to be with a woman who has my back and I can have her back and she cares about me and she cares about my happiness. But if the guy gives in and go back, does he relinquish too much power? No, I don't think, well, that's the thing. I mean, he could, but the point is, you got to be the benevolent queen. Mm. If this is honestly and authentically what you wanted him, when you get him, you got to, you got to, you, you, you don't stop adding jelly beans. Mm. <laughs> it's still the same. The game is the same. You got to represent yourself the way you're representing. And if you're not, don't misrepresent yourself because it all, what, what don't come out in the wash comes out in the rinse anyway. So if you're not really concerned and you're not kind and you're not, you don't really care about his, his welfare, don't be that way because eventually he's going to get accustomed to that. And then when you're not that, then you're going to have a problem. So just to the same thing, if a dude is not monogamous, don't ask a chick to be monogamous. There are women who want to rock right. with a dude. I mean, I know we don't think that, but we don't think that because we don't think we deserve it. We don't think we deserve a polyamorous relationship. We don't think we're good enough to be good enough for more than one woman. Mm. And when we do, when you find somebody who does, he goes, oh, this is what it is. You, you want in or you don't. No, a pleasure meeting you. Had a great time. I, I holler at you. Because he's not, he's not bargaining. He's not negotiating his non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. And if his non-negotiables is that he's, he's polyamorous, then that, that's non-negotiable. Why would you negotiate that and then sneak behind somebody's back? Lacks empathy. And if you guys want to listen to my podcast, my podcast is called Man School 202. You can go to manschool202.com or just go to dantenero.com and click uh, and click on podcast. You can get it there. You can also get it on iTunes. Um, it's called Man School 202. It's, it's, I have everybody on it, um, men, women, trans, everything in between. Um, also, just go to dantenero.com. And, and check out my podcast if you need a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Uh, same thing, DanteNero.com. Click on consult, and I'll, I'll straighten you out.